big, let's give a big warm welcome to Amazon Lit. Woo! Miami, what the fuck is up? So really my thought process with these guys is I'm absolutely fascinated by them. You can watch two YouTube interviews I've done with them, and I probably ask the same questions every time, but I'm, I'm always like blown away, and they're, they're questions that I'm genuinely asking. So um, we will open up to you guys. Taylor and I both have questions. I'm just a super curious person, and um, I just like asking questions to these guys because they're, they're light years ahead of us and in, in multiple ways, um, social media, I would say, and, and, and also um, the Amazon business. And it's very cool just to be around you guys and seeing what you're doing. So we can actually bounce back and forth between Amazon Lit, and what I mean by that is your personal brand, and then also your Amazon business. Um, so I've, I've, I've talked to you guys so much about your Amazon business, but um, I wanna ask good questions. I don't wanna ask like generic ass shit. Do you have any questions off the top that you want right now? I was curious, like, I know for a lot of us getting started, it's like, you know, the goal changes over time. So like when you guys were in BJ's doing the retail arbitrage, what was that, eight years ago or what was that, seven? Did you, did you see this clearly to where you are right now? How often would you say like two years it changed and another year it changed in terms of the goal, the vision? How often did the goal and the vision change? And you know what I'm saying? Or was it like super clear, like I, we know we want a warehouse with 20 employees and from, you know, right when you started. I think Scott hit it earlier where he said, just look at the steps. So when I'm on step one, the only goal is step two. And step two at the beginning was have something that allows me to provide for my family, right? Instead of working a nine to five, because I wasn't too good at that. I'm not too good at taking direction. So I needed, I needed to find something where I could find success. That was goal, that number one goal. Once I had that money, a little bit where I could uh, provide for my family, then it was like, okay, what, what's next? Maybe get some employees and provide for their families. And, and then the goal constantly, as you hit these new targets and thresholds, new goals appear. Uh, I mean, they come to fruition, something that you just didn't expect. So right now we're moving into a larger facility and one of our new goals is to have a, a wholesale company where we're able to provide valuable products to help the members of our community sell more products on Amazon because one of their biggest issues is finding suppliers, legit suppliers. So that's a goal that wouldn't have even been sustainable a few years ago and now is. I have a question about um, partnerships. So one of the most common reasons why businesses fail is because the partnerships fall through. This is something a lot of people don't talk about. It's because the partnerships don't work out. It's because they couldn't stick through. It's because they weren't compatible for whatever reason. You guys um, were friends before you did business, which is interesting. Instead of doing business and then becoming friends, like you could really say that Steve and Taylor, we kind of did business before we became friends, you know? Like we were both, inter I interviewed him on my YouTube channel before he became my friend. Um, Keith here, one of my best friends, uh, we've done business before and we were friends before we did business. Um, what tips do you guys have for partnerships? And you guys have an amazing chemistry um, up on stage, and it seems like that probably uh, goes into the workplace as well, where you guys just kind of like, it's almost like your brains are connected and you think together. Um, have you guys had partnerships other than, than this that have failed, or are you guys just always 100% uh, on with, with who you choose as a business partner? Um, well, I, I think first, the first thing I'd say about business partners, you got to spoon with them at least once a week to make the relationship work. <laughs> so you, you got to spoon with your business partner at least once a week. So you and you two are probably good, right? So because me and Sebastian are good. So, so you guys spoon twice. So you're ultimate business partners. Right, but really, it's just it's just a balance. And Sebastian and I, you know, we uh, a funny story. I don't know if I've ever sh shared this, and he might kick me in the ass later. But uh, when we were young, like 17, 16, 17, 18, something Sebastian and I did was we traveled the Northeast and we we performed at like venues as rappers. Yeah, we did, you know. We were rappers. Yeah. <laughs> as
as rappers. And we did this in New York City, in New Jersey, in Pennsylvania. And we, and we did it for years. Yeah. And, we thought, and we thought we were going to be like professional rappers for the rest of our lives. And that moment, I didn't, I, I didn't know. I didn't know in a couple, couple years I'd be traveling the world speaking to all these people. And that experience and that stage presence and that back and forth between me and him rapping for years would help me harvest this skill that I have, you know? So it's like, it's it's just forever changing. And I think the partnership really, it's gotta be a, a take, give, and, take, give, take, give, and then gain relationship. Like, I don't always have the answers, but sometimes Sebastian does. Sometimes I think I have the right answer, or I know I have the right answer, and Sebastian wants to do it a different way, but you gotta, gotta be like, let's try it that way. What would like be an instant red flag for a bad business partner? Like, nope not doing it like is there anything Sebastian would do where you're like absolutely not anymore maybe that's putting you on the spot but we could take a step back and just say is there any character flaws you see in someone you're like no I can't uh, do it well bad, poor credit score bad ma uh, money management the lack of integrity honesty just any of those regular principles spiritual principles that you live by on a daily basis I um, mean the last thing I'd, li I'd like to point out is if you're getting into business with anybody you need a partnership contract you need something that states okay Eric's expected to do this Sebastian's expected to do this if one of these members of this company do not abide by this contract, then they are able to break the contract legally because you have a binding document that states the agreement. And if that document is not in place, then you can't take it to a lawyer and separate. You're gonna be in a nightmare because one person is not performing. A business prenup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna ask you the same question that I asked Scott, but what do you think is like the number one thing you can do if you're doing like, let's say you're doing six figures a month, what's the number one thing you can do that you can do to get to seven figures? Like what should you be focused on? Is it sales? Is it products? What, what is it? Uh, drop your profit margin, sell more items. It's that simple. Drop your profit margin, sell more items. It's, and get more inventory in stock. At the end of the day, Amazon at scale, at, at, at the level, you know, Sebastian and Scott and, and some of these big guys are doing it, it's a volume game. You know, it's numbers. If I can double my business at, at six figures to 200,000 and only sacrifice two or three margin points, that's massive growth. You know, that's another 13%. It's crazy. It's just crazy, the growth that's experienced there. So it's a volume game. Definitely a volume game. Another one is, it was thrown out very subtly, but probably the best gem I heard today, the tactic was brought up by Morgan, uh, word description. Search by descriptions. People don't realize about 80% of our catalog is from our buyers finding, finding it through description searches. Not the novice UPC to ASIN connection because those listings are more saturated, less profit on them. It's those, especially if you find one with a UPC connection, most likely there's a multi-pack out there that's gonna provide you more profit than the single UPC connected ASIN. So same question except for social media. How do you, how do you grow social media? Like what's the one thing you should focus on? In your opinion, everybody probably has a different answer, but for you guys, what do you think it is? Um, I think the most valuable thing for social media for me has been honesty and authenticity throughout every single post and interaction I've had with each and every one of you that I've met and all of you that I will meet in the future. Because if that doesn't exist for me, then the relationship is not valid. You know, also I think another huge component to our growth was that I still to this day, like I just got, you know, 12 fire emojis. I will respond to them in a little bit. Um, I'm just soaking up all this information, but like I don't have anybody in my DMs responding to you. You know, there's nobody posted, like that is me. That is like, it's authentically me. And I think early on, initially, obviously, you know, as it grows a year, two, three years down the line, I hope I'm not in the same, th in the same boat where I'm responding to every DM. But initially that's super important to me. And then just getting consistent consistency with posting. You know, Gary talks about it three posts a day, which is fucking hard. That's hard shit, unless you're scheduling it out. Try creating three posts a day for the next 10 days. It's, it's complicated to do that. You gotta be committed to make it happen. You just made me lose my train of thought on that last point. Um, I was about to make everybody commit to posting <laughs> three times a day for the next no, 10 days. <laughs> um, it's a lot. Who, who here commits to posting at least three times over the next month though? I, say I. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Um, Taylor, you got any questions for them before we open it up to?
Any anything like in specific that we don't post, or or just times where I'm like, fuck it, I don't feel like. Yeah, yeah. The, the, my uh, my personal life, I, I usually don't post most about. Um, and then really, there's nothing we really don't talk about from our as far as our Amazon business. I guess really like bottom, like exactly what I take home every year. You know, like I'm not I'm not comfortable sharing that with anybody. But um, so remember? so outside of growing your social media and obviously getting students and um, you probably even growing your Amazon business, throwing these events around the country you guys have been doing. What is like the top one or two things you can think of that you've gotten out of these events that you did not expect to get? And I know that's kind of on the spot question, but something other than social media growth or a monetary value from, from selling courses or maybe establishing relationships with, with Amazon people, is there anything kind of like off the wall or like you're like, wow, I did not expect that hosting an event in, in Vegas? Yeah. Anything yeah. either of you can think of? Uh, for myself, it'd be motivation. I'm, I'm constantly surrounded around people that are trying to better themselves, a lot of sellers, and it's just when I get home, I'm ready to grind. Uh, when I get home, I'm ready to grind. Like prior to this, it'd just be Eric and myself going back and forth seeing who could one-up each other because we're very competitive. Imagine that. Uh, but when I'm around all of you, it just it's a reminder of hey, there's other people that are trying to do it. It brings me back to where I was, and, and I get home, and I'm inspired. Yeah. So definitely. And I get gems from all of you all the time. Yeah. Gems yeah. and nuggets of the business that I had no idea. Yeah. And I learn from and I grow from. Yeah. And, and I think really what, what, what I've, I've learned a lot about life and, and how to host better events when hosting events and traveling the country hosting events, like the event in Vegas, you know, for us to put that together to, to host like an amazing experience, three day experience for like people who've been in our community, that's just, that was a six figure event to put that on, you know, but we do it because we, we see that the efforts that our community putting in warrants a six figure reward for those results. You know, so like as long as the community is committed to taking action, I guarantee you Sebastian and I will be here for the long run. We are not going anywhere. We will continue to guide you along your journey on each and every aspect of the growth of your company. And I can guarantee you that. So I've gotten my questions out of the way. Do you have any more, Taylor, before we open it up to everyone else? Anyone else have uh, a burning question for Amazon Lit?